lecture uh, explains why was China traditionally not interested in trading with the West. So the first thing we have to understand why China was not interested in trading, and when, uh, first of all, why, when we say West, we're talking about European countries and the United States. That's the traditional meaning of this term, the West. So in the 19th century, the dynasty that's ruling uh, China is called the Qing Dynasty, and they had been ruling for centuries. Um, it was a huge empire. You can see from the map, it lasted from 1644 to 1911, controlled all this area. Up here is the Great Wall of China. Uh, they have a border with Russia here. Here is India over here. Here is Korea, and there's um, Japan's kind of like over here. Here are the Philippines. So China is a huge, powerful country, and culturally they're xenophobic. And, and what xenophobic means is they're not really interested in what outsiders have to offer. They're kind of scared of outsiders. So they're a traditional uh, society, very well ordered, very stable. And the reason that they were so well ordered and stable is they had a very strong basis of agriculture. Um, they had an amazing amount of production of rice, and it's the basis of their economy. Uh, they have a very quick growing strand of rice, and it's used to feed the huge population of China. So they have no, no real need to, to get anything from any foreigners. And the way that people had been making money for centuries in the, in the world economy was by exporting. You wanted to have more exports than imports. So China had no reason to import any food or anything like that, so they really only need to export things. And they had a very traditional culture which promoted the concept of being self-sufficient. Don't ask for help. They're very family-oriented as a, cult family -oriented as a culture. Um, here is a picture of a traditional Chinese textile. So even if the British are making great textiles, they're not interested in them because they have their own. Um, they're not interested in any Western products whatsoever. Um, what they are interested in doing is selling a lot of things to Western countries, most famously China, like uh, plates. We call that fine China. When, when people get married, they order fine China. And the reason it was called fine China is the best flatware came from China. Now, the only port that Westerners could trade in was called Guangzhou, and it's down here in the south. And you have the Philippines over here. Here's India. So Western countries are coming in and they're trading in Guangzhou. And the Chinese culture does not allow them to go anywhere into the interior of China. They bring everything out of here. You can see Hong Kong is right here, which is a very famous place that produces a lot of goods even today. And so Guangzhou is the only place that you can do this. And because they control all the trade through their government of the Qing dynasty, there is the, the balance of trade is making a lot of money for China. China is making more on its exports than it's spent on its imports. It's importing very little, and it's exporting a lot. And the most famous product that it's exporting is tea. Um, the tea that I like to drink is actually um, called Earl Grey tea, which is a type of British slash Indian tea that they get from China. So the British are importing a lot. And this imbalance in trade is actually going to take the supply of cash away from the British. The British are actually running out of silver. They're running out of cash because they're buying so much from the Chinese and the major product they had been selling, which was textiles from the Industrial Revolution, the Chinese aren't buying. The, the Chinese are not even interested in the guns of the British because the Chinese had invented gunpowder. So there's an imbalance of trade and the, the British are trying to fix it. There's only one product that the British can make that the Chinese are willing to buy. However, it's illegal and that's called opium. Um, here's a picture of guys in an opium den. Opium is a drug grown from the poppy plant. Um, today, we ref uh, the most refined form of it in the early 20th century was called heroin, uh, an artificial kind of it that unfortunately in the 21st century that people are aware of is called OxyContin or Oxy. And so the, the, the drug of opium starts to be sold in China in the 19th century. And over 12 million people of, of China are addicted to this drug. And the British start to make all their silver back. They're, they're really, all the silver that they had spent on buying tea, they're now selling opium. And, and drugs are very profitable because they're illegal in China. 
and you can make a lot of money. You can sell one chest of opium for you know a 400% profit. So the British are making a lot of money, and you, one of your forum discussions is going to be about the, the Chinese reaction to this. So this launches the opium war. The Chinese government requests that the British stop the trade, and the British are like, no, because they're unfortunately they're racist at this point, and they don't really feel the Chinese, they don't care if the, the Chinese are addicted because they don't really care about Asians. Um, the Chinese declare war, but the Chinese militarily, and this is called the Opium War, this war between China and Britain in the early 19th century. The Chinese cannot defeat the British because the Industrial Revolution advantage. Um, most battles in the Opium War are at sea, and the British, because they have the steam engine on their ships, here you can see in the background a steamship, um, they, the, the, they can move around the, the ocean regardless of the wind. They have sophisticated cannons, and literally, the Chinese boats are called junks. And that now, it's kind of a joke today when we say junk, we mean something that's really bad, but this was the term for it. And it's a wooden ship with sails. And the, the steamships, and here's a British painting of, that, of a battle during the Opium War, can sail around very quickly, can fire guns very quickly, and they completely demolish the Chinese Navy. So the Chinese are forced to sign the Treaty of Nanjing. And these are some terms that are going to be on your quiz and your exam. They have to give the British extraterritorial rights. And, and what that means is a British person living in China does not follow Chinese law. They have to follow um, British law. So, And this, this map right here will appear on your quiz and your exam as well. For sure your exam, uh, hopefully we have room for it on your quiz. But you can see here the British right here, this is their sphere of influence. And everybody gets a little bit of slice of China. Every Western country gets some China. So the British are here, they're in Tibet, they're in India, they're in Burma. Um, these places will have a lot of importance during World War II as well, so we want to introduce them. They're along here, along this river, the Yangtze River. The Germans have very little bit right here. The Japanese also get involved because they're going to westernize. They're not going to be like China, which is the focus of a future lecture. Um, they're up here. You have the Russians. Um, the Russians are kind of up here in the north. Um, the French are down here in what we call Vietnam um, today. The, the United States does not necessarily get involved too much. They're mainly here in the Philippines. So the U.S. does not get a part of China, but the, the U.S. is involved in Japan and, and the Philippines. So there's a lot of countries who want a sphere of influence, and what they do with their sphere of influence is they dominate trade. By the way, this map is on page 338, and you have to know it for your quiz and, and or your exam. All right, make sure you guys study hard. Thank you. Bye.